Frank Lloyd Wright, one of America's most renowned architects, was born in Richland Center, Wisconsin in 1867. Wright had an early exposure to architecture. At nine years old, he played with frobo blocks gifted to him from his mother, which allowed him to experiment with multiple combinations of geometrically shaped blocks. When he was 11, he worked for his mother in a family farm and noticed that there were repeating simple geometric shapes appearing in nature. After high school, Wright attended the local University of Wisconsin and studied engineering because there were no architectural courses offered there. He achieved hands-on experience via a part-time construction project at the university, but due to boredom, he dropped out during his first year. In 1887, at 20 years old, he moved to booming Chicago and acquired a job as a draftsman at the office of Joseph Lyman Silsby, and eventually ended up working at the architectural firm of Adler and Sullivan. Sullivan became his mentor, and together they discussed the prairie style, which is an American style of architecture which focused on clean lines and open floor plans, a complete opposite of classical European architecture. Wright got married in 1889 at the age of 22 and immediately designed his own home in Oak Park, Illinois. In 1893, after five years at Adler and Sullivan, he got fired for going against the company policy by designing homes outside of work. So, he started his own architectural firm, the Frank Lloyd Wright Incorporated, where he delved into an organic style of architecture, which complemented the natural site and used local raw materials such as wood, stone and brick in their natural state. Wright's designs were based on several concepts like cubism. In cubist artwork, objects are analysed, broken up and reassembled in an abstracted form. Instead of depicting objects from one viewpoint, the artist depicts the subject from a multitude of viewpoints to represent the subject in a greater context. The next concept is minimalism, wherein the simplest and fewest elements are used to create the maximum effect of any design or style. Expressionism, which is to express meaning or emotional experiences rather than physical reality, was also used. Integration with nature he grew up close to the land and in touch with its creative processes and it gave him constant inspiration for his architecture. He believed architecture must stand as a unified whole, grow from and be a blessing to the landscape. Lastly, Art Nouveau, which is an international philosophy and style of art, architecture and applied art inspired by natural forms and structures. Now let's take a look at his works. The concepts used in his works are purely based on our observations and personal opinions. The Larkin Company Administration Building in Buffalo, New York was built using the concepts of cubism and minimalism. Unfortunately, the building was demolished. Unity Temple in Oak Park, Illinois displaced the concept of Art Nouveau as shown through the glass ceiling. Edgar J. Kaufman House in Mill Run, Pennsylvania, also known as the famous Falling Water that was influenced by Japanese architecture. Herbert Jacobs House in Wisconsin, influenced by Usonian style of architecture. Paul and Jean Hanna House in Stanford, California was built using simple geometry. Taliesin West near Phoenix, Arizona used simple geometry. It is Wright's own home and studio. The Guggenheim Museum in New York was built with the concept of expressionism. Wright often designed furniture for his buildings. For example, he designed a wheelchair for the Larkin building. According to Wright, it was to make cleaning more convenient a wooden chair for Unity Temple and for the Paul and Jean Hanna house, also known as the Honeycomb house, he designed hexagonal chairs to fit the name. Now let's take a closer look at falling water. Just like in Japanese architecture, Wright wanted to create harmony between man and nature and his integration of the house with the waterfall was successful in doing so. The house was meant to complement its site while still competing with the drama of the falls and their endless sounds of crashing water. The power of the falls is always felt not visually, but through sound, as the breaking water could constantly be heard throughout the entire house. It's a house that doesn't even appear to stand on solid ground, but instead stretches out over a 30-foot waterfall called Bear Run. Wright displayed acute sensitivity to the natural site, attempting wherever possible to save trees and retain rock outcroppings in their original form. There was less excavation and removal of rocks in the building of the tiles itself than that which occurred in the small quarry that served as the source for its rock walls. Falling water was built using rectangular concrete planes interlocking and cantilevering out into space. 
Introducing the character and natural features of landscape noticing the rock walls, exposed by weather and stream erosion, composed of thin horizontal layers of Pottsville sandstone, varying from dark grey to a lighter buff colour. The vertical rock walls make the houses actual anchorage to the ground, but the horizontal floating planes nevertheless still relate to the earth in a larger sense. In the summer, the house can hardly be seen due to the denseness of the green vegetation. In the autumn, the coloured leaves complementing the light golden colour of the concrete terrace add an element of beauty that is extraordinary. In the winter, with snow cloaking the flat roofs and the terraces, the house appears to be an extension of the flat rock layers of the waterfall more than at any other season. The living room is defined by the shimmering water-like flagstone floors and the smooth, precise light ceiling floating overhead. Each of these surfaces, while constructed of heavy materials, seems transformed by the space and light flowing and floating under and over us. Sunlight and exterior views enter all around as the walls are largely dissolved into glass curtains, allowing us to be suspended over a stream or waterfall, while simultaneously being housed within this refuge anchored to the earth.